cultures may have lots in common. Yet remember, two magnets with the same polarity do not stick together. They say that differences are dangerous, yet seven stripes on the same color will never make a rainbow. Don't be deceived by similarities, but don't focus too much on the differences. Devil is in the details. Same but different series aims to show what national cultures have in common, what makes them different, and how both the similarities and differences influence the way we do business. In other words, Germany prioritizes efficiency in written communication, while in Austria you must combine formality with a more personal touch. Asking for help in Austrian working environment can be seen as a way to contribute to the collective success of the team. In both countries, it's important to strike a balance between being autonomous and collaborating. You meet people in a specific context. Being open-minded, kind and curious will help you everywhere. Welcome back to our podcast series where we explore the intriguing dynamic of life and work-related communication across the globe. I'm Ola Moroz, team lead at Cross Culture Communication Center. Hello, Ola. Hello, everyone. Oksana's here. As we are setting off on a new leg of our culture journey, I'm also inviting you to check our two previous podcasts on Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Ola, what's the plan for today? What if this time we guide our listeners through some of the main stages of project teamwork? Sounds good. Let's say our project is expanding and new people are joining the team. What would be helpful for them to know at this stage? Well, picture this. You are a fresh hire in a German company. Your first team meeting is efficient and all about business. You get tasks that are clearly within your job description. It's all about individual accountability. Even then, socializing conversations revolve around the work topics. It's a professional atmosphere and you are expected to deliver results. I get a feeling it's all quite technical, so to say. Would this be similar in Austria? Your first day in Austria starts with a warm welcome and invitation to coffee. In the team meeting, there is laughter and you talk about personal life and interests before diving into the agenda. While responsibilities are crucial, the approach to task is more fluid and team members readily offer help to each other. Your first need to build personal relationships and strong team cohesion. Well, you can feel the difference here. Voila, it's no secret that live face-to-face -face communication is often considered as the best way to cooperate. However, working across countries, time zones and media platforms adds to the complexity of our workplace interactions. Any tips for a newcomer when sending emails to their colleagues? Emailing colleagues in Austria is very natural to add a personal greeting and ask them about their day and well-being and only after that move to the main idea. But you have to remember the use titles at the beginning and transition to first names after some time. It's about striking the balance between formality and friendliness. If you look at some emails that teammates exchange in Germany, you will probably see they are often concise, to the point and business focused. For them, it's important to use formal language and avoid any unnecessary decoration, so to speak. In other words, Germany prioritizes efficiency in written communication, while in Austria you must combine formality with a more personal touch. Exactly. Voila, being new on the team often means asking people for help with all sorts of questions. And I also know that in some countries, asking for assistance may be seen as a lack of expertise. How are things in this context in Germany and Austria? Asking for assistance, especially when you are new to a team or a project, is generally not seen as a lack of expertise. 
Instead, it's often viewed as a sign of collaboration, practicality, and willingness to learn and work efficiently with others. So there is nothing culturally dependent about this aspect, right? Yein. Germans value efficiency and competence in the workplace. Asking for assistance when you genuinely need it, it's seen as a practical way to achieve goals efficiently. They appreciate individuals who can identify problems and seek solutions, whether through their own expertise or by leveraging the knowledge of others. Asking for help in Austrian working environment can be seen as a way to contribute to the collective success of the team, or it can be an opportunity to connect these colleagues on the personal level. Which means in both countries, it's important to strike a balance between being autonomous and collaborating with others. You nailed it. And what about updating the team on your progress? How do you do it? Let's give our listeners a chance to practice. Ready to start. Would the following update meet expectations for German or Austrian workplace? We've achieved a 20% increase in sales this quarter, driven primarily by our marketing campaign. However, we did encounter some production delays due to a supplier issue, which we are actively addressing. Team listeners, we've got five seconds to make our guess. It's definitely an example for German context. They intend to appreciate concise, fact-based communication. Thanks for this explanation, Ola. How would such progress updates sound in Austria? For instance, like that. Our sales have increased by 20% a quarter, thanks to the successful marketing campaign. On a personal note, I would like to thank the team to their hard work and dedication to this project. Gut gemacht. Kudos to you. To be honest, I can still hear a lot of factual information. That's the point. Austrians appreciate facts and clarity as well. At the same time, they may be more open to a balanced approach that also includes personal elements. All right. You've been on the team for a while and you've grown into the leading role. What does that change in terms of cross-cultural communication? As for leaders, there are higher expectations for setting an example for effective and respectful communication. In Germany, leaders often have greater decision-making authority. What does this decision-making authority stand for? You need to lead discussions, take decisions and communicate them clearly. Being a leader, you will likely be responsible for mediating conflicts within the team and finding solutions that maintain team harmony. Based on what you've shared, I would expect Austrians to focus more on collaboration. Exactly. Austrian workplace culture emphasizes collaborative leadership. You are expected to encourage participation and input from team members as Austrians value consensus building and collective decision made, making. And when conflicts happen? Let me illustrate this with an example. I'm all ears. Imagine we have the following situation. In a multinational project team working on a complex software development project, there is significant disagreement about the approach to solving a technical issue. German lead let's say Markus, will organize a joint meeting, invite the conflict participants and ask. I've noticed that there is a divergence of opinions regarding our technical approach. Let's address this head on. John, could you please outline your proposed solution? Then he will thank John and invite Maria to share her perspective, saying afterwards, Good points, Maria. Let's analyze this risk further. We will schedule a meeting for tomorrow with a structured agenda to reach a consensus. That's a nice one. In contrast, the Austrian team lead takes a more diplomatical approach by having 
private conversation with each participant to collect thoughts and concerns first, and then involving the team in a collaborative discussion. For example, John thinks that his approach is the most efficient, but Maria is worried about potential risks. Team meeting statement after individual conversations can look like that. Now that I've heard your concerns, let's discuss a solution as a team. How can we address the risk while maintaining efficiency? What a lovely way to show how differently people handle conflicts. Yeah, and either ways is acceptable. True, Ola. So far, we've focused on work. What about life after work in these countries? There is life after work. Austrian is often considered to have a slightly more relaxed approach with a concept of Gemütlichkeit that promotes a cozy and comfortable atmosphere. So it's all about leisurely pace and longer breaks during their workday. Speaking of working hours, I've heard that doing overtime is strictly regulated in both Germany and Austria. How true is that? In Germany, it might be seen as dedication to the job and commitment to, to meeting deadlines, but it's crucial to communicate your availability, set and discuss boundaries, and emphasize efficiency during work hours. And we have to remember that both Germany and Austria have strict regulations in place to govern working hours and overtime to protect the rights and well-being of employees. It's always good to know the local laws and ask if you have any questions. Sure. Besides, you meet people in a specific context. Being open-minded, kind and curious will help you everywhere. Couldn't have said it better, Ola. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as we've enjoyed creating it for you. More cultural insights to come.